Stack size is probably the single most important variable driving your decisions in poker. We talk about stack sizes relative to the big blind. A normal stack size might range anywhere from 100 times the big blind all the way down to zero in the case of a poker tournament. There are four broad ranges in between 100 and zero that would affect how you should play poker. The first is from 100 to 50 big blinds. Then we have two ranges between 50 and 35 and 35 and 15 big blinds. The last stack size range is from 15 to zero when you're on the cusp of elimination from a poker tournament. We'll talk about each one of these ranges and how it affects both your starting hands that are profitable to play as well as the number of moves or type of moves that you're capable of executing once you're in a hand. Let's first talk about the range from 100 big blinds to 50. We'll call this the healthy stack size. If you buy into a poker tournament, you usually start with between 50 and 100 big blinds. So if you're playing a cash game, since most tables are capped at 100 big blinds, most players tend to have right around 100 big blinds. If you have a healthy stack, you're going to see three streets. Assuming two players or more like their hand, you're going to get all the way to the river. You're going to see the flop, the turn, and the river. And if you want, your stack size is big enough that you could bet all three streets and still have a meaningful pot-sized or greater river bet at your disposal. In addition to this, you have something called implied odds, meaning stack sizes are deep enough that you can play speculative hands like suited connectors or pocket pairs, and if you get lucky on the flop, your opponent can make a big mistake and ship you his entire stack. His stack is big enough that that prize is sweet enough to offset all the small losses when you play these hands and don't hit on the flop. Because of the three streets are going to be seen and you have implied odds, you can play a wide range of hands with a healthy stack. The widest range that you're comfortable with given your poker style. And of course, all moves are available to you as well. The three bet and the four bet preflop, a check raise, even the check raise bluff or a float. Whatever the move, if it's in your toolbox, you can execute it with a healthy stack. As we move out of the healthy range, we move into what we'll call the medium stack range. When you have between 50 and 35 big blinds, most poker tournaments are played in this range. After the first few levels all the way up until the final table, most players have between 50 and 35 big blinds. It's a critical stack size to know how to play if you want to be a good tournament player. The most unique thing about this stack size is you'll probably won't see the river. Your stack's just not big enough to still have a meaningful river bet left. So normally, if one or two players like their hand, they'll get all in on the turn. This means you've got to decrease the prevalence of you playing draws. Remove the worst draws from your range, like gap-suited connectors. For instance, nine jack of hearts with a missing 10 in the middle, or the lowest suited connectors, or the lowest pocket pairs. You no longer have implied odds, cause, or great implied odds, because you might not even see the fifth card, so you don't have full chances of completing your hand. You should, however, increase your aggressiveness. Since most hands are defined by the turn, try and win the hand pre-flop or on the flop. 3-betting and 4-betting are still very possible, but keep in mind that as you get closer to the bottom end of the range, a 4-bet preflop is usually a bet all-in, and it's not as great as a traditional 4-bet because you're losing fold equity. Your opponent knows that there's no additional threat of future betting on later streets, and he's more likely now to call you because his risk is capped. If you lose some chips and fall out of the medium range, you enter a small stack range between 15 and 35 big blinds. 
if you have a small stack, you no longer have implied odds. Your options have become further constrained, and you can't play hands like suited connectors or small pocket pairs. What you can do is a new move in this range called the re-steal. It is what it sounds like. Somebody before you at the table has acted trying to steal the blinds with an open raise. You can steal from this thief by 3-betting him. And it has to be a 3-bet all-in. Your stack size isn't big enough for you to make a normal 3-bet and still have chips to work with on the flop. You would be pot committed, so why not just make an all-in 3-bet and you'll add in the idea of fold equity. Now your opponent, the original raiser, has to fear for his tournament life. And because of this, a re-steal normally works very well at this chip stack range. If, for instance, a re-steal doesn't work, and you dip below into the final range, you've entered what we call the danger zone. It's such a bad place to be because you only have two available moves. You've got to go all in or fold with any hand. You can't raise and leave chips behind in your stack, all in or fold. And when you go all in, you need to be the first to act. We call that an open shove. It's attractive because you have a chance of winning the blinds and antes without any further confrontation. If somebody's already entered the pot, you can only re-raise all in with the best of hands. And a range this late in a tournament might include pocket eights or better. When you're open shoving though from late position, you can probably profitably open shove any two cards, any card in the deck, maybe folding the five worst hands or something. If you're in early position, you can still be aggressive with your open shoving range, especially as you get into the bottom half with seven big blinds or less. You can start sh open shoving maybe the top two-thirds of poker hands. And for your intuition, that would include hands all the way down to 10-2 suited, pocket twos, or a hand like king two off. As you play in poker tournaments, and you get adept at adjusting your style as you fall in and out of these different ranges, you'll become a lethal threat to every other player in the tournament. And if you really want to get good, start noticing your opponent's stack size and whether he's aware of this strategy. If he's adjusting his game based on his stack size, start to think about what that means for your calling and raising ranges.